The calendar is more than just a calendar for you to look at to keep track of upcoming or previous dates in days, months, or years. You can also keep track of and schedule appointments, events, and meetings. So to go to the calendar, just come down below in the navigation pane. And you can see when I hover over it, you get the hover peak, as we talked about in an earlier training video. That way I don't have to go to the calendar if I want to find out what today's date is. You can see right there in the block of blue, it's the 5th of March. And then down below, if I have anything scheduled in the next seven days, it would be listed here. And it doesn't, so party on. Let's go ahead and go to the calendar. And in the folder pane, by default, you get one calendar. If you want additional calendars, you have to create additional folders for this view, as we talked about in an earlier training video. And so up here, we're going to talk about the date navigator. That allows me to choose any date, well, for the month of March. And you can see it's the same block of blue representative of today's date, March the 5th. So if I select the 14th, you can see it's a different highlight, a lighter shade than the darker shade of blue. So when I select the 14th, it updates the main view over to the right, which you can see by default up here on the Home tab in the Arrange group, it's highlighted, it's by day, as opposed to the others that we'll talk about in just a minute, like the work week, the week, and the month. And back over in the Date Navigator, if you see a date that's in bold, and I do right there the 28th, that means a meeting or an appointment has been scheduled on that date. Go ahead and select it, and then come over here to the main view and scroll down, and hey, it was the company potluck party. Oh, that was so yummy. Hover over it, and you can see in the pop-up, it's got the start and end dates and times. Let's try another. Well, the 9th and 10th are in bold, so select the 9th, and it was ghost hunting. Oh, that was spooky. And so the only time that these dates won't be bold anymore is if you delete and clear out all appointments and meetings for that day. And it's a flag to let you know that something's coming up. Now, of course, these are past appointments and meetings, and it will be there until you delete them. So that way, it's nice to know if you forgot what you did that day, that you can always go back and say, oh, yeah, it was ghost hunting. Now, if you want to go ahead and navigate from one month to the next, you've got the arrows to go to the future and to the past. Or you can click and hold down the left mouse button on the month and year. And when you do that, you can advance by one, two, up to three months all the way out to June. Oh, that's going to be nice and warm. And then to get back to today's date, instead of clicking and going back, 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 you can just come up here on the Home tab to the Go To group. And there you go, today. And we're back. Now, if you want more than one month, just the current month, you can hover over the split bar down below until you can see arrows pointing up and down. Then just click and pull down, and I get the next month. So I've got two months to click around in. Now, my screen resolution is a squishy 1024 by 768. Yours is probably a lot larger, so you can go ahead and continue to click and drag down. You'll probably get three, four, five, or more months. And so I can click over here and go to April the 13th and come back to the 7th, to the current month. In any case, let me go back to today, and then I'm going to hover over that split bar and push it back up and just focus on one month at a time here. Now, over in the main view, again, the default for the main view, as you can see, that's highlighted there is by day. And you can see it's March the 5th. So if you want to advance over here, you can do it day by day because, hey, that's how we take it is day by day, right? And if you want to do it by month, then, well, there's the date navigator. And then down below, you can see you've got the increments by hours. So from 2 o'clock to 3 to 4, 5, and so on. And then what's broken up in between those times, you can see over to the right, you got a dash line. So if you look at this 2 o'clock, that's that line right there. And then the dots here is the half hour. So that'd be 2.30, then 3, 3.30, then 4, and so on. And oh, by the way, you see that thin blue line right there? That represents the current time. So if you look down below at the clock, it's 6.14. And so it's a little past 6, but not quite at the halfway mark, 6.30. It's kind of like the sundial. Instead of looking for a shadow, you're looking at the lines so when it comes to scheduling and you're not focused on what time it is. You're like, oh, yeah, we've got to have a meeting. Let me schedule it at 6. And it's like, oh, well, I can't schedule at 6 because that line represents the current time is past 6. And this line will only show up on the current date. And then you'll notice that from 5 o'clock on, it's a light shade of gray. And then above that, it's all clear white. And then above just prior to 8 a.m. up to midnight, it's all in a lighter shade of gray. And the reason for that is that the default working times that Outlook has set up is from 8 to 5. And if that's not your default working hours, as well as you don't want the increments here to be in half hours, you want them every 10 minutes, don't worry about that. I'll talk about that in a later training video and how you can customize all that so it fits your working day with your working times. 
as well as the increments. And by the way, when you want to schedule an appointment, you can schedule it in the shaded area. It doesn't matter. Outlook doesn't care. It won't flag you or anything. The only flag that it'll give you is that, hey, these are your non-working hours. So if you want to schedule, go ahead. It's up to you. Just wants to let you know that, again, these aren't your typical working hours. And then you have over to the left, you have previous appointments. So whatever appointment you had before, if it was yesterday, two days ago, three days ago, whatever's the next previous appointment, when you click on it, it'll jump right to it. And then, of course, the next appointment, if it's tomorrow, it'll jump right to that. Or if it's three days out, it'll jump right to that. Or whatever the next appointment is, two, three, or four days out. And then when it comes to navigating within the day view here, you can do it a couple of ways. You can either come over here and click and drag the scrolly bar up and down, Wee, or you can go ahead and click the up arrow or the down arrow, or you can right-click anywhere here, including the arrows. And when I right-click like right here, you get the options where you can scroll here. When you click that, it'll actually scroll down to wherever here was when you right-clicked. And then let's go ahead and right-click here. You can find out what the top is, and that's within the current view. So it went from the bottom to the top. And then if I right-click, go to the bottom, goes to the bottom of the current view. The scroll bar goes down to midnight here. And then right-click. You can page up, page down. You can use the keys on the keyboard as well. Page up, and then right-click. And then scroll up, scroll down is the same as clicking on these little arrows here. It's in small increments here of a half hour. And if you have a time slot selected, you can go ahead and use the up and down arrow keys. You can also hit the home key, takes you to the start of the working day, which is 8 a.m., the default. The end key, E-N-D, takes you to the end of the working day, which is 5 p.m. Control end takes you to the end of the day. Control home takes you to the beginning of the day. One other thing that I want to go over here, come up here, click on the view tab, go to the layout group, and click on daily task list. What this does is if you have tasks that are due that day, let me go ahead and click on normal. It'll show it down below. You see where it says show tasks on due date. So today's date, March the 5th. If I have a task that's due on that day, when I get to the day, it will show it there, the start date, the due date, reminder. It will also show any tasks that are past due. So if you've got like 30 tasks past due that were due yesterday, two days ago, three months ago, that'll be listed here, including those that are due today. So if I don't have any that are past due, and I go to tomorrow, and I have a task due that day, it would be listed there. Of course, you can click on this to minimize it, and I'll show the tasks that are due that day. Active task, completed task. Let's go ahead and restore that. You can also click down below. You get the cursor flashing. You can type in a quick task for that date. In any case, let's go ahead and turn this off. Come back up here. Click on the View tab. To the Layout group, click on Daily Task List to Off. And let's come up here and go to the next view, which is the work week. And the work week, the default for Outlook is Monday through Friday. If yours isn't Monday through Friday, it's maybe Tuesday through Saturday. That's okay. Later training video, I'll show you how you can customize that. Again, it's got the default working hours, 8 to 5. So if I go ahead and scroll above that, it's in light shade of gray. And it's in half hour increments. We can change that as well. And then, of course, down below. And there you go. You got the current time, at least for the work week here, because that's got today's date. Let me go ahead and scroll back up. And if you want to keep track of today's weather, you can click on the drop down arrow and add a location. And let's type in the zip code 84121. Hit enter. And it says, OK, Salt Lake City. Gotcha. Select it. Oh, it's a freezing 33 degrees. All right. Well, if you don't want to see that anymore, because that's just not lifting your spirits, then go ahead and click on the X, and it clears it out, goes back to the default Washington, D.C. You also have the Instant Search field. If you click in there, you get the Related Contextual Search tab. So if you want to search your calendar for appointments or meetings, go ahead and type what you're looking for in there, the keywords. As we talked about when it came to searching for messages, you basically have some of the same features and options, like if you have an attachment tied to it, or if you just want to search for all Outlook items, you can do it within the calendar here. Let me go ahead and hit the Escape key to get back out. So there's the work week, Monday through Friday, and then you have the regular week, which includes all the days, Sunday through Saturday, and you can see the current date that's highlighted, Monday here. And then you got the non-working times, which includes Sunday and Saturday, and the white area here are the working hours, again, Monday through Friday. You can see the current time here. Over here in the date navigator, you can see the entire week selected. And if we went back to work week, it would just be 
the default Monday through Friday. Let's go to the next one, month, and you can see that today's date, you got the light shade of green there, and over in the date navigator, well, I'd say the entire month selected, but it can't deselect here. It's not programmed to deselect the previous month, so it includes that in the week, and that starts the month of March. Now, if you come over here and you select a day, it'll actually put it in right mode, so you can actually type in an appointment for that day. You see the cursor flashing there? So you can click on the X if you didn't mean to do that. You just want to actually select a day. Instead, you can come over here and do it in the date navigator. But, you know, hey, you can do it here as well. Just click on the X so it doesn't think you're trying to write in an appointment there. And, of course, you can go ahead and use the scrolly bar. You can see when I click and drag, it's got the date out. So that's March 11th, 18th, 1st. It's going week by week. So I go down to April the 8th. Of course, you do have the arrows up above, so you can go back to April, go forward to May. And when you come over here, of course, you can also right-click and get the options that we saw in the day view. Scroll here, top, bottom, and so on. And then outside of the Arrange group, we've got the Go To, which is the next seven days. If you click on that, it shows the next seven days in the calendar. So today's date, Monday, and the next seven days including the current date, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then let's go back to the month. You have the expandable dialog box button of the Go To group. Then when you click on it, you can actually click on the drop-down arrow and use the date picker here to, well, including going to today, but if you really want to go far out, you don't want to keep clicking next, 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 then go ahead and delete what's in there, and you can type in 4 slash 5 slash 2020. And then go ahead and hit the tab key, and it tells you the day, which is a Sunday on April the 5th, 2020. And then if you want to see this in the month calendar view, click OK, and it jumps right to it. And it's got it highlighted. And let's go back to today's date. And then finally, a nice little fun thing that you can do to your calendar is that you can right-click anywhere on the calendar and go down to Color and choose a fancy color. I'm going to choose the Embarrassed Light Red. Select that, updates it. Oh, isn't that fun? Although we're not keeping a theme here in the month of St. Patrick's Day with green. So right-click anywhere, change the color, be moody like me, and I'm going to go back to green. Ah, there we go. Top of the morning to you. toy toity toy toity toy Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.